Okay, let's explore this equity accounting problem. Now I'll read the first two paragraphs you see on the screen. On January 1, 2016, Top Company acquired all of Bottom Company's outstanding common stock for $842,000 in cash. On that date, one of Bottom's buildings with a 12-year remaining life was undervalued on its financial records by $72,000. Equipment with a 10-year remaining life was undervalued, but only by 10000 The book values of all of Bottom's other assets and liabilities were equal to their fair values at the time, except for an unrecorded licensing agreement with an assessed value of 40000 in a 20-year remaining useful life. Now, the Bottom's book value at the acquisition date was 720000 All right, now the second paragraph. During 2016, Bottom reported net income of $100,000 and declared $30,000 in dividends. Earnings were $120,000 in 2017, with $20,000 in dividends distributed by the subsidiary. As of December 31, 2018, so this is two years later, the companies reported the following selected balance, which includes all revenues and expenses for the year. So in this area right in here, you know, I'm sort of penciling over at this little green shaded area. We have the results for 2018. All right, let me slide down. Now, there's the question on the bottom, uh, highlighted in a light yellow. If top applies the equity method, what is its investment account balance as of December 31st, 2018? So in other words, we're going to try to calculate what happened using the equity method so that we can come up with the investment account balance two years after the acquisition. So let me slide up and sort of illustrate the logic we have to do here. Uh, at this point, we'll just focus on uh, the, the allocation of the acquisition date fair value uh, versus the book value, okay? So the first thing we have to do, we've got to, um, uh, determine what was the excess fair value over book value. Well, they told us the fair value of the consideration transferred by top was 842,000 and the book value was 720,000. Okay, now sliding back up, there's the 842,000. That's what we paid for it in cash. And there's the 720,000 that was given. Okay, so that means 842 fair value less book value of 720 gets us 122,000 of excess fair value over book value. But we've got to consider the adjustments we're making with the equity method, right? So what do we know? Uh, the building had a 72,000 difference between book value and fair value. In this case, the building um, was 72,000 higher. The equipment was 10,000 higher and the licensing agreement was 40,000 higher and the remaining life was given. So if we take those various values that were in excess of book value and divide them by the remaining life, we figure out what the annual amortization is that we must record on the stepped up values uh, if we're using the equity method. Okay, and remember, all of these were undervalued, right? The book value came out to be less than the fair value on the acquisition date. All right, so now let's see the rest of this problem and how we go through the calculations. So the initial value was 842,000, just to the left of my mouse here. And the book value uh, well, let me let me go through this. The initial value, the fair value consideration we paid was eight hundred and forty-two thousand. And bottom companies, two thousand to sixteen to two thousand seventeen, increase in book value. And how would we calculate that? Well, you would take the income less the dividends, right? Remember, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So if we're calculating book value, assets minus liabilities are the same thing as equity. So we can just back into the book value by considering the equity. All right. And they told us what the income was less the dividends. OK, 
Okay, and I slid back up. So how did we come up with that 170? Um, they had net income of 100,000 less dividends of 30, so that's 70, plus another 120 less 20, so that's 100, right? So 100 plus 70 is 170. That's how we come up with that. All right, so we've explained where the 170 comes from, and the excess amortizations would be the 9,000 we calculated here for two years. 9,000 times two gets us 18,000. Um, now, what happened with the current year recognition? Right, again, we're trying to work our way to the investment in the bottom in bottom account. So we know what the excess amortizations were. We know what the increase in the book value was. Um, and the increase in the book value, of course, we're going to reflect in, um, in the equity account. So then we have to consider current year recognition. So the equity income accrual is another 120. This is for 2018. And another 9,000 of excess amortization reduces the investment account and then the dividends get reduced. So the net of that is 101. So eventually we've got 216, 217, and 218, three years worth of adjustments. Now, to come up with, the, with what the income was for that last year, you have to actually calculate it from here. You actually have to actually take the revenues less the expenses. And you've got to go through that same routine considering how does that impact retained earnings to figure out what the dividends were. Um, so you want to go through that. Well, actually, the dividends are even provided for you. There's your 10000 so you only have to do the uh, the income calculation. And then once you've adjusted for all of those transactions, um, you, you've calculated what the investment in the bottom company would be at the end of uh, 12, 31, 18. Okay, now I've adjusted the screen here a little bit. And now let's move beyond equity account accounting. And let's think about what entries we would have to make on the consolidated worksheet if we're preparing consolidated financial statements. Okay. Okay, so let's go through these. First, there's entry S. Now, entry S eliminates the subsidiary's beginning stockholders equity account against the book value portion of the investment account. So in other words, entry S eliminates the equity accounts of uh, the company that was purchased, you know, the, the acquiree, the, the subsidiary, okay? So it, at the book value. So we would debit 400000 to common stock and debit retained earnings in this instance, and that eliminates the beginning stockholder's equity account. The offset is a credit to the investment in the subsidiary account in this case, it's called investment in bottom, as you can see here. Okay, then we make entry A. Now, entry A recognizes the fair value allocation of the subsidiary's assets in excess of the book value. Okay, so this represents the original allocation less two years of amortization for 216 to 217. So we're gonna have to do this, uh, you know, subsequent to, ac ac subsequent to the acquisition. So what do we have? We've got the buildings, the equipment, and the licensing agreement. Um, we have to represent what was their original allocation less the amortization we've recorded. So we increase those amounts, putting the building equipment and licensing agreement on the consolidated work papers at its fair value, fair market value or fair value at this later point in time in which we're putting together financial statements. And again, the offset goes to the investment in bottom account. Okay, so little by little, we're gonna eliminate that investment in bottom account because on the consolidated financial statements, we will, we will include the buildings and equipment and licensing agreement as those items on consolidated financial statements. Um, well, I slid up, but I guess we don't need to just yet. Um, so entry I eliminates the parent's equity income accrual and the balance is computed 
earlier. Okay, so what we're doing now is eliminating the equity, how do I describe it, the income that the parent recorded on its books using the equity method, right? Equity and subsidiary earnings is an income statement account. So we need to debit that to remove it from the books of the parent. This is another way we're eliminating the various adjustments that were made to the investment in Bottoms Company. Okay, then we have to go and tackle entry D, which eliminates intra-entity intra dividends. So if they declared dividends of 10,000, that certainly impacted the entries we made to the investment in, in uh, the subsidiary, in this case, investment in bottom. So we have to reverse that entry. That's essentially what entry D does on the consolidated work papers. We debit the investment and credit the dividends declared. All right. And then we move on to the last entry, entry E, which is the recognition of the excess fair value depreciation and amortization for the current year, in this case, 2018. So now that we've put everything at the beginning of year uh, uh, book value, fair values, which we've seen here, now we need to record the amortization on a consolidated basis. So depreciation and amortization expense both go up. Um, and uh, then the book value of the equipment building and licensing agreements go down by that last year, 2018's amortization. Okay, now a little note here. If top utilized the initial value method rather than the equity method, we would have some different changes in what these entries would look like. Okay, that's just something uh, to keep in mind, but we're focused on the equity.